You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
Now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Now, here's Grouchy. Are you ready for us to be strong? Are you ready? Are you ready for us to prove them wrong? Are you ready? Let me know you're ready to be turned in the people who cannot be afraid of us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? We cannot be afraid of us. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Good evening and welcome in. It's Wednesday, it's Wednesday night on KLRN Radio, and uh, I know I've been absent a lot lately, but uh, I'm here now. So we're going to make the most of it. Um, I have no damn clue what tonight's programming looks like beyond me. So, Rick, if you know, you can say. I mean, Rick, you can't hear me. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, tonight Rick is in whisper mode, so you can't hear him. Um, but uh, after me, Red Wine back at the top of the hour, uh, followed by uh, Amish and Robinson, Rick and Orty, whatever we're calling it these days, it's going to happen as far as we know. There you go. <laughs> Circle K, Horror, and Rick. <laughs> that is about perfect, too. Oh, uh, anyway, I, I do apologize for having uh, been away for so long. Uh, there's been some things happening and, uh, you know, most of them weren't fun or good. So, um, but we're, we're seem to be past that now, uh, fingers crossed. And uh, looking forward to being back uh, with you much more regular. And I know Rick will appreciate that too. Uh, yeah, because he's been carrying my spot usually. <laughs> yeah, so a little, a little light applause. That's, that's nice. Ah. <laughs> uh. I love it when he does this. Uh, he, by the way, none of those are planned. I have no idea what Rick pushes on the other end of this thing. Um, so it, it's a surprise to me as much as it is to you. And uh, that's the beauty of live radio. Oh, since we talked last, what's happened? What's happened? All kinds of crap is happening. Um, in case you didn't know, Pakistan and Iran uh, seem to have wanted to pick a fight with one another now. Uh, they are amassing troops at their borders on both sides. Uh, I have read reports that um, Pakistani Air Force has been buzzing Iraqi positions on the border. I, You know, China had tried to mediate this thing and it fell apart. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, maybe that'll take Hezbollah's attention away from Israel. Fingers crossed, um, because if if they're going to escalate with Pakistan, Iran surely can't be all split up and uh, trying to work on two different fronts. They're they're just not all that. So uh, anyway, uh, you know that's just some other unscripted stuff going on in the world. You know, as if there wasn't enough happening in the Middle East. Um, we got the Houthis, uh, no blowfish. Uh, they're showing their asses over in Yemen and uh, begging, just begging to be bombed into oblivion. Uh, but, of course, uh, no spine Biden isn't going to go there. You know, we send uh, we send up a, a sortie, a, a whole crew of fighter jets uh, to launch like five missiles at three tenths. And uh, they think that's going to deter them. No, that's not what's going to deter them. <clears throat> but you got to have the stones to pull the trigger on the big deal. And I just don't think he does. Biden. I really don't. Okay, not in whisper mode anymore. And Biden's stones are in Jill's purse, so it's irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, You know, 
I, I don't expect much from him militarily. And, uh, not because he's, um, not because he can't be because he's too afraid. I mean, the, the thing, the thing that, that irritates me about this whole scenario is Joe Biden basically let America fund the attack against Israel, whether anybody wants to talk about that or not, because that's exactly what happened. Well, there you go. There you go. So, but anyway, all that unscripted stuff going on on the other side of the globe, I'm bringing us back home. Okay? So, <clears throat> some of you probably remember that there's this uh, there's this legal case going on in the state of Georgia uh, where a, a Georgia district attorney, uh, uh, she, she says it's pronounced Fawny, but it's Fanny Willis. Fanny Willis continues to take media heat for allegations that she had an improper romantic relationship with a special prosecutor that could taint the case she brought against former President Trump on election interference. Uh, court documents that were filed say Willis, the DA of Fulton County, hired a special prosecutor named Nathan Wade. Uh, her alleged romantic partner, to help prosecute Trump and benefited financially from the relationship in the form of lavish vacations that the two went on using funds that his firm received for working the case. Now, uh, Willis has not confirmed or denied the claim, but suggested that she and Wade are being scrutinized because of their race. Got to play that race card, right, baby? Couldn't possibly have anything to do with you being unethical. Uh, the Atlanta, Con Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, published an analysis headlined, Lack of Willis Response Let's Critics Make Hay in Trump Probe. Uh, and it said that some state GOP leaders who were initially reluctant to criticize her have now changed their tune. Uh, the absence of a formal response from Willis has left a vacuum that's allowed her biggest critics, including Trump, to run wild with unchecked claims about the prosecutor and her decision-making and the validity of the case. Uh, Willis's silence has provided an opening for Georgia's most powerful Republicans, some of whom had previously offered a cautious defense of Willis's conduct to change their tune and open the door to a more formal rebuke, um, noting that uh, Governor Brian Kemp called the allegations deeply troubling. That'll show her. That'll show her, Governor Kemp. Deeply troubling. So here's the deal. Fulton County records show that Wade has been paid $654,000 in legal fees going back to a year ago, this month, January of 2022. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah, not a year ago. January 2022. $654,000, an amount authorized by the district attorney, Willis. Uh, Willis spoke about the claims on Sunday at Atlanta's Big Bethel AME Church. And if you saw any of the video, there are some Big Bethels there. No lie. And they uh, Big Bethels claiming... and they cannot lie. Oh, wait, sorry. My bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They like the Big Bethels. <laughs> uh, claiming only the black prosecutor she hired has faced scrutiny while two white colleagues get a pass. Well, that's because the two white colleagues aren't being paid the money. And they're not going on trips uh, to the Caribbean and to uh, Martha's Vineyard, um, you know, with... Fanny. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so of, kind of surprised that hasn't been more, you know, expressed by folks. I'm like, look, you can't play the race card. 
we we all know first you don't like white chocolate second of all um they're not banging you so that's why. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly even the daily beast published an opinion piece um <clears throat> that says, why can't we just shrug off the Fannie Willis scandal with the subhead if the DA prosecuting Trump prolonged an investigation to justify a hefty salary for a romantic partner? Uh, that is a genuine conflict of interest that would require her dismissal. Now, if you got the Daily Beast coming down on your ass and you're in the left, that's a problem. You you, you 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 missed a perfect shot. You should have said what if you had the Daily Beast coming out coming down on your fanny. Come on now, I've, tra- uh, I've trained you better than this. Fanny. Yeah, well, I trained you better than this. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, come on, uh, uh, ring rust. <laughs> I'm claiming ring rust. Anyway, uh, they wrote there is a good reason why Wade has been scrutinized and not the other two prosecutors. Duh. Uh, First of all, the other two prosecutors were, A, incredibly qualified. um, And it's, you know, Wade's credentials, Wade being her her romantic partner. uh, Look, this is the Daily Beast saying that his credentials are a bit of a sideshow, having barely prosecuted anything more than parking tickets. Damn. And that's who she's given $654,000 to. You know, it it just... and the fact that they're not talking about it, uh, it, it doesn't help that Wade filed papers to divorce his wife uh, the day after Fannie Willis hired him. But even if he were indisputably the best person possible for the role, he was paid $654,000, and Willis made choices throughout her prosecution that seem, in hindsight, calculated to require him Um, the standard to disqualify Fulton County here is not whether Fannie Willis actually made her decisions to benefit Nathan Wade. It's plausible that she would have made the exact same choices without the personal relationship. But if her choices to extend or prolong the investigation benefit a romantic partner who is paying for her meals and vacations, that truly is an actual conflict, and not only is it a conflict, it is a breach of ethics, and it is fraud. Uh, Trump was indicted by Willis in August and pleaded not guilty to charges related to allegedly attempting to subvert the results of the 2020 presidential election in Georgia, including violation of Georgia's anti-racketeering law. Now, they're pushing for the maximum on this, knowing that if anything, it's going to be a minimal uh, con- conviction on very much lesser charges uh, that are going to basically equate to misdemeanors. Uh, Trump's co-defendant, Michael Roman, accused Willis and Wade of having an improper and clandestine affair at the same time appointments were being made for the 2020 election interference case. Roman was a former official on Trump's 2020 campaign and argued about the integrity of the case being compromised because of the affair, asking last week for the charges against himself to be dropped. Uh, The filing also calls for the entire district attorney's office, including Willis and Wade, to be disqualified from prosecuting the case. Now, the judge in this case has stated his intention to hold a hearing in February to look over the truth of these allegations. If they are true, the case will not be dismissed, but it's likely that he will disqualify Willis, which under Georgia law will require disqualifying her entire office. Uh, The case will then go to the prosecuting attorney's Council of Georgia, which will decide who the case can go on to next. So stay tuned. It's going to be at least February, if not longer, before we find out about Trump in Georgia and what is happening. 
And if the case gets kicked and she gets disqualified, who knows how long it'll take before we have a decision. Anyway, <clears throat> from the south, we move to the north. And uh, we Wait, talk hang about on, hang on. a couple of parents. Since, since we're moving to the north, can we ask them yeah. to come get their weather? It's still in my yard. Just yes, they, they need their, their weather is in my damn yard, and they need to come get that shit because I don't like it. Um, I spent 25 minutes this morning breaking ice off of my truck. And uh, luckily, there's no rain today, so I won't have to deal with that part of it tomorrow because, uh, God bless it, last night it got down to 14 degrees here. 14 degrees on the beautiful Gulf Coast. Okay, for y'all that's cold and that wasn't much warmer than I had last night. I think our I think our I think our <laughs> low was like six degrees. And then today we practically had a heat wave. It was like forty seven. I actually turned down the heat. I got so used to how cold it was that when the heater actually got to the right temperature, I was like, Holy crap, it's hot in here, turn that shit down. <laughs> you got to forty seven? Yep. I, uh, actually right now we are sitting at thirty four, but our high today. Let me open it back up here. Hang on. Because I only made it to 42. Uh, it was somewhere around 42, I think. Let me see if it still shows it. I don't think it will. Um, no, it doesn't show it anymore. But my high, just... my high tomorrow is 48, and it's going to be less windy, so I'm, I'm planning on going swimming. Now, my high tomorrow is supposed to be 58, So, and I'm only going to 24 tonight, so it will feel like a heat wave tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh... Uh, yeah, I'm ready for that. And then, But guess what? We turn back around, and Friday, another front hits, and Saturday morning, the low temperature is supposed to be at 20 degrees. Dude, I'm telling you, the one thing that I have been waiting for for, like, all week now is all the people that always scream and bitch about how much better it is when it's cold than when it's hot. I, I, <laughs> I, I, see, I see nobody posting their winter selfies with smiles. I've been waiting for those. Let me, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, we don't get this kind of weather very often here. And... Um, I, I I can tell you right now, after having both knees and surgically repaired, uh, an ankle replaced, and and just it's it's brutal. It's brutal. I don't know which leg to limp on. They hurt so bad. It is just absolutely crushing. I mean, when you're when you're. Back when I had the worst problems with my knees, I would still go play golf. And the way I got through it was I would take an Oxycontin and a couple of shots of Fireball while we were on the driving range warming up. And then I would do that again on hole six and then again on hole 12. And that's what got me through the round. Now, I haven't had to resort to anything like that now, but I can tell you... My legs were so stiff this morning that it took me about a half hour of isometrics laying in bed before I could get up. And that's bad. That's bad. And it's funny because I've had an elbow broken backwards and surgically repaired, and I've had a hand and forearm crushed and surgically repaired, but my arms don't bother me. Yeah, the, the the weird thing is for me, like with it being so cold, my back has been the, where my issues have been. Well, that and my left foot, but I figured the left foot thing out because I, I, you know, for a while I was having to go back to the office, so I got used to putting shoes on all the time. And then when I retired, I was like, "Fuck it, I'm never putting shoes on again unless I have to go to the house." Um, apparently, <laughs> apparently, Mother Nature said, "Ha, ah, fuck you," because uh, yeah, I, I'm wearing shoes right now because after. Like, a month of almost never putting shoes on, my left foot and my big toe were like, we're going to cramp on you all the fucking time now, so put your, wow. shoes, put your shoes back on. But, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I was about to make a joke with you about, you know, the, it, it's your check engine light coming on because you passed a double nickel, but my, che <laughs> my check engine light's been on for a while because, I mean, I've been shot, shot at, stabbed, ran over. Exactly. You know. <laughs> Exa yeah, I was going to say, we've we've taken our bumps and bruises, I mean. Definitely. So, yeah. 
I mean, yeah. And, and, you know, the older we get, the more that wears on us too. So <clears throat> shit, who knows? I was told I'd be in a wheelchair by the time I was 50. That hasn't happened yet. And, uh, I'm, I'm just, I figure I'm on borrowed time, but it's blessed. So I'll take it, you know? Anyway, uh, hey, we got we talked ourselves to the bottom of the hour. Why don't we go ahead and take the break so we don't, because this next story is a little long, too. And uh, we'll come back and do that after the break. Rick can push a button and we can uh, refill our drinks. Yeah, go, go. Absolutely. It just uh, just unnumb your butt, stretch your legs, get your drinks and get your ass back in four. Yeah, I was just letting it play loud enough that you could actually hear that I'd started it, and then I dropped it. <laughs> I... Hi. I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades, an aloe vera lubricating strip, and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate. I know jiu-jitsu. I drive like a gay. So when I'm coming to see you, see you. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$3 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. It's great being back. Just a reminder that Red Wine is coming up top of the hour, and then your nightcap with Rick and Ordy, uh, the Circle K whore, and Rick. Hey, he's in chat now, so that was supposed to be our little secret. <laughs> What's that? I said he's in chat now. The Circle K, K whore thing oh, was supposed to be our little secret. Oh, well, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I guess so, I leaked that one. Yeah, sorry. I was actually. It's been so long since I've. Heard the yeah. music while you were here. I was actually chair spinning, so I kind of forgot to drop the volume. My bad. No, that's all right. I think he can handle it. Anyway, uh, how many of you out there are parents? Show of hands. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Most of you. Yeah. So w- if you had a middle school age child, 12, 13, um, do you think that the school should have a right to socially transition your child without your knowledge? Is this rhetorical or can I start cussing now? <laughs> well, no, it could be, well, hang on. You're going to want to cuss later, but, um, here's, this is what's happened to a couple in Michigan. Um, you know, let me let me just read to you some of the things they're saying here. Okay, this is this is them talking, not me. Middle school was a tough time for our daughter. She was struggling with classwork, friendships, and even a sense of her own identity. Like any loving parents, my wife and I were concerned. We worked closely with her teachers and other school officials to understand her challenges and help her work through them. What we didn't know was that these same people were lying to us, deliberately withholding key information and misleading us about things going on with our daughter. The people we considered partners in our efforts had months earlier decided to socially transition our daughter using a boy's name and male pronouns with her at school without our knowledge or consent. They hid their actions by referring to her only by her real name when talking to us and carefully removing any reference to a male identity in records that they shared with us. It took a foul-up in the school's paperwork, a male name left in a document, 
to reveal what was happening. Once we had the whole picture, we could finally help our daughter with the issues she was struggling with. Because of that, today she's doing remarkably well at pace or at peace with herself and her identity. But if this could happen to our child, how many other parents have no idea what school officials are pouring into the minds of their sons and daughters? This is why we chose to file a lawsuit with our attorneys with the Alliance Defending Freedom against the Rockford Public School District for their employees' actions and to challenge the policies that prompted their lies to us. Amazing. Absolutely friggin' amazing that these school systems have the balls to pull this stuff off. They say, when we confronted the officials about their actions, they stood by them. Now we expect to hear back from them regarding our lawsuit by February 8th. We couldn't stay silent and let the same thing happen to someone else. Over the last few weeks, a lot has been said about our lawsuit. Some sources seem to want to divert public attention away from the school's responsibility to parents. Other reports seem designed to distract the public with oversimplifying reporting or implied opinions about us personally. So the parents wanted to share their reasoning regarding the action that they chose to take. Regardless of where you stand on the specifics of what the school district was hiding from us, everyone should be concerned by this deliberate effort to keep parents in the dark. Because when school district policies allow or even require lying to parents, it's the kids who get hurt. In their case, the district's policy not only required employees to remain silent about significantly important information regarding their daughter, but actually encouraged those employees to alter official records, concealing the district's actions and furthering the deception. Even the policy itself was hidden from parents and taxpayers. No school district should be making important decisions on behalf of parents, much less concealing those decisions from them. Parents know their children better than anyone and have the constitutional right and moral responsibility to direct their child's upbringing, education, and health care. The district's policy disregards this fundamental right and in doing so hurt our daughter at a time when she needed to be helped. Rather than override parents to press their own ideology on children, school officials should partner with us in helping our kids. Instead, many school employees are being told by their superintendents, school boards, and teachers unions that parents have no rights when it comes to what happens to their children at school. That's an idea that runs against parents' wishes, but also the law. If these policies are being enacted in your school district, you have the legal right to take a stand, either voting against the policies in the next election or demanding their removal, possibly even removing your child if that's what it takes. But you have to know the policies are there. Changing these policies takes more than a few voices. It takes a community, a community willing to stand together. Of course, taking this stand in the public arena isn't easy. It's easier to turn a blind eye. Trusting the circumstances won't affect you directly. We didn't think this could happen in our school district, and certainly never to us. If the school district hadn't made a mistake, uh, staff there would still be deceiving us. Sooner or later, those deceptions affect all of us. We could have just pulled our daughter out of school and kept what happened to ourselves, but while we want to see justice for her and our family, we also want to alert parents and individuals everywhere to what's happening and give courage to others who are struggling with these problems trying to make a difference. Many have spoken out in public or private to support us. While we can't always respond to every comment, please know that we hear you. We can't express enough how much your solidarity means to us. 
This is a time for standing together for our rights as parents for the health, safety, and future of our children. You may you may cuss now, Rick. <laughs> Sorry, you caught me eating, but I do have words. Um, so yeah, th- no, this yeah, is right? th- this is kind of, and this was an epiphany I had the other day, and I don't I I think it took me watching everything is crazy. This things have gone with all this to realize that everything since the feminist movement has been government shield. No shit. They were working on getting both parents out of the home so they could raise the kids through the state. And this so, proves it. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, now hang on, because I, I have an addendum to this story, too. Uh, well, not this particular story, but the topic. Okay? Uh, at the same time, a Maryland school district can continue to keep students' gender transitions from their parents after a federal appeals court ruled the plaintiffs didn't have standing in the case because they did not allege their specific children were transgender, according to a Monday ruling. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit dismissed the case in a two-to-one ruling, which was brought by three parents of students at Montgomery County Public Schools over the district's quote-unquote gender support plan. The guidelines for transgender identifying students adopted by the Montgomery County School Board of Education in 2020 or 2020-2021 school year address a student's identified name, pronouns, athletics, extracurricular activities, locker rooms, bathrooms, safe spaces, safe zones, and other safety supports. Fuck them. U.S. Circuit Judge A. Marvin Quattlebaum, yeah, you heard that right, said the parents' opposition to the guidelines didn't give them standing in the case and rendered it a policy disagreement because they didn't allege their children had gender support plans of their own. Now, hang on, stay with me on this. The parents have not alleged that their children have gender support plans, are transgender, or are even struggling with issues of gender identity, the court stated. As a result, they have not alleged facts that the Montgomery County Public Schools have any information about their children that is currently being withheld or that there is a, excuse me, substantial risk information will be withheld in the future. Now, the court says in in their decision, Even though the court said they lack the power to address parental objections to guidelines, that does not mean that their objections are invalid and, in fact, may be quite persuasive. But in order for you to challenge it, you have to be going through what the parents in Michigan are going through. Otherwise, they have have no, no obligation to tell you anything. That's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, very much. Very much. Ah, oh, pisses me off to no end. I think I have time to do this. I'm I'm going to I'm going to try to squeeze this in. Um we've gone yeah, while we while we're there, you know, since that was Maryland, let's just bounce over to DC. Um and let's talk about the sticker shock on just the interest of our national debt. The combined net worth of the most prominent billionaires in the United States would not be enough to pay a single year's interest payment on America's ballooning debt, which currently stands at an astonishing $34 trillion. The combined net worth of billionaires Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Ken Griffin, Mark Cuban, Ray Dalio, and George Soros adds up to approximately $726 billion, according to data compiled by Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Meanwhile, the interest on our national debt 
is at $730.8 billion. So they're $4.8 billion short, all those billionaires combined. Interest payments on the U.S. national debt have risen sharply in recent years and remain on track to continue increasing. Net interest payments on the national debt hit a whopping $659 billion in fiscal year 23, marking a massive jump from 2022. The comparison signifies that the Democrats' increased taxation suggestions uh, isn't a viable path forward towards erasing the debt, especially as interest payments pile up. The United States collected $4.4 trillion in taxes in fiscal year 2023, up from $4.19 trillion in fiscal year 2022, yet the debt increased by more than $2 trillion. The debt interest payments continued to spike in October, the first month of the fiscal year, when the government paid $76 billion on the national debt interest. The figure marked a shocking 77% increase from a year before, when the government paid $43 billion on the interest. Interest payments on the national debt are poised to reach an astonishing $1.4 trillion in just under a decade in fiscal year 2033 surging even higher to a projected $5.4 trillion in 2053. The projected growth does not just mark an increase in raw numbers, but also an increase relative to the size of the economy. While the payments in fiscal year 2022 accounted for 1.9% of the U.S. GDP, they are projected to account for 3.2 and 6.7% of the GDP in 2030 and 2053, respectively. The national debt itself is set to reach new highs in coming years. I mean, every every dollar that it ticks on now is an all-new high. Uh, it's on a trajectory to reach over $46 trillion by 2028 uh, at a ratio of over $300,000 of debt for every American taxpayer. Folks, pay attention to who you vote for and why. They're failing you. They're failing me. They're failing all of us. Both parties. Sorry. That's just how it is. We got to find somebody that's going to do this the right way. Okay, cue it up. We got a double happy ending tonight. Madison Marsh is not only the current Miss Colorado, she is now the current Miss USA. She is also a Harvard student and a United States Air Force second lieutenant who has earned a coveted spot to train as a fighter pilot. Woo! She says pageants are changing, and one of the ways that they are changing is being physically fit for women. She's an Arkansas native, too. Uh, she says, for me, it's great because I need to stay physically fit for the uh, for my performance in the gym and for the military. So it already coincides with the pageant training. Uh, she has a, a love of science and a dream to, to uh, as a little girl, be a pilot or astronaut. Uh, her parents always encouraged her to follow her dreams, sending her to space camp where she met astronauts and fighter pilots. At 15, she started her flying lessons, earning her pilot's license two years later, and began to work towards her goal of becoming a cadet in the Air Force Academy. Uh, she also wanted to try competing in pageants as an extracurricular activity. Uh, she said, my cousin had competed in pageants for a while and loved it. So uh, just before graduating from the academy and being commissioned as an Air Force officer, Miss Marsh was crowned Miss Colorado in May of 2023. She called that surreal. I can't even imagine how she feels about Miss USA. Um, her mother died of cancer, and that is why she is at Harvard. She is also contemplating becoming a cancer researcher. I didn't know they had just researchers. I, I mean, I don't, 
I'm sure there's a lot of shit I don't know, but that's okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, if you haven't uh, enjoyed uh, taking a quick glimpse at Miss Madison Marsh, Miss USA, I encourage you to do so. Uh, you can see exactly um, why I joined the Air Force instead of the Marines. <laughs> all, I'm, all I'm gonna say about that is um one, she's blonde, she's hot, and she has a physics degree already, which makes her the real life Samantha Carter. I mean, you know, exactly. Thank you very much, but with longer hair. And that was just to make the chat drink, because that's a Stargate reference, and, by the way. And longer legs too. So there you go, Ordy. <laughs> all right, now, uh teeing up for the, the second half of the guaranteed happy ending. A professional ice hockey team in Pennsylvania broke a franchise record last week, but it wasn't for goals scored or goals defended. It was for the number of teddy bears tossed onto the ice by fans to help local kids. The plush pandemonium broke out in the second period as the Hershey Bears scored a goal to trigger the annual teddy bear toss that collects toys for charity. Uh, the announcer screamed, let the sweet, cuddly mayhem commence once the biscuit hit the basket. Uh, if you're not familiar with hockey, that's a term for putting the puck in the goal. Uh, the exuberant downpour of plushies began four minutes into the second period at the Giants Center last week with, get this, 74,599 stuffies raining down from the fans. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> Take an hour to clean it up. Oh, he said, you see it on video, but when you're actually part of it, it's amazing. Just an incredible sight, said Bears coach Todd Nelson. First, you're celebrating the goal, and then you start getting pelted with bears, uh, said new Hershey player Chase Prisky, experiencing the event for the first time. It's a, just a phenomenal atmosphere when tens of thousands of bears start raining down on you. Uh, the event surpassed the club's previous record of 67,309 collected last year for donation to more than 35 local children's charities as part of the club's Hershey Bears Cares program. Uh, since its inception in 2001, the tradition has collected nearly half a million cuddly creatures for children in need. The Swigert Family Foundation also donated $55,000 to the Children's Miracle Network in Hershey to recognize the efforts of the local fans this year. Uh, based in the town of Hershey, Pennsylvania, the Bears would go on to a 3-2 to two overtime victory of the Lehigh Valley Phantoms after a 40-minute delay to cart off all the toys. They must have had Zamboni scraping them off the ice. Oh my God, I can't even imagine. Uh, improving their best record to 29-7. and seven. And folks, that's it. <clears throat> if, if a story like that can't make you happy, I don't know what can. And that's the show. If you like it, tell your friends. If your friends like it, you need new ones. But they and you are welcome right here with me on KLRN Radio, America's podcast network, home of the conservative curmudgeon show. I'm the Grouch. Peace. So, so I do have another trademark. Next time, you uh -oh. do, next time you do a double happy ending, we're just going to call it a threesome with G. I like that. Man, you are you are kicking. I like it. By the way, I trained you better. You should have emphasized panda and pandemonium. You were talking about stuffed bears. Come on now. Just saying. <laughs> well, I could have done my uh, my 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 uh, Foxworthy Im uh, impersonation. It was pandelirium. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hitting the button now because I'm sure the ladies are going to start blowing up my Skype in a minute. Yeah, play my good music. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. <laughs>
I've been here for seven years.